We're very, very rare configurations of atoms, I think. There are about 300 million planets in our galaxy alone that might support life as we know it. By the sheer number of these planets, it can be argued that we are most likely not unique in the galaxy. I just can't believe this hasn't happened in other places. The question is how often does it happen and how widely spaced are the civilizations? Brian Cox's insights into the world of exoplanets or extrasolar planets are truly captivating. These planets, which orbit stars outside our solar system, are crucial for understanding the universe. They're key to comprehending the universality of planetary formation and exploring the potential for life beyond our home planet. What's more, exoplanets have been discovered around a myriad of stars, from red dwarfs to sun-like stars, and even within binary star systems. Most of those stars now we know have planetary systems. We estimate there are something like 20 billion Earth-like planets, or potentially Earth-like planets, in the Milky Way galaxy alone. This diversity showcases the varied environments where planets can form and thrive, opening our eyes to the vast possibilities of the cosmos. Now, the methods used to discover these distant worlds are as intriguing as the planets themselves. Take the transit method, for instance. It's quite a clever way to spot an exoplanet. Astronomers look for a slight dimming in a star's brightness, which occurs when a planet passes or transits in front of it. This decrease in brightness can tell us a lot about the planet, like its size. A larger planet will block more light, leading to a more noticeable dip. Additionally, the frequency of this dimming can reveal the planet's orbital period, giving us an idea of how close it is to its star. But it's not without its limits. This method tends to favor larger planets and only works if the planet's orbit is aligned just right from our perspective. It's also influenced by the type of star being observed. One of the most exciting outcomes of this method has been the numerous discoveries made by the Kepler Space Telescope. A recent study shared on a preprint server showed that the telescope could discover signs of atmospheres capable of supporting life on alien worlds beyond our solar system in only about 20 hours. Kepler really changed the game, revealing a multitude of exoplanets and thereby broadening our understanding of the universe. It's fascinating to think about how these distant worlds, each unique and mysterious, orbit their stars, potentially holding secrets to questions we've been asking for centuries. Brian Cox has a way of discussing these topics that not only educates but ignites a sense of wonder. His ability to bring these complex astronomical concepts down to Earth, so to speak, opens up a universe of possibilities and encourages us to look up at the stars with a new perspective. The Kepler Space Telescope, launched by NASA back in 2009, really opened up a new chapter in our quest to understand the universe. It's kind of like a cosmic detective, specifically designed to hunt for Earth-sized planets using what's known as the transit method. Imagine this, Kepler staring at over 150,000 stars, waiting for the telltale dimming that happens when a planet crosses in front of a star. It's a bit like watching for a tiny shadow to pass across a bright light. Kepler's primary mission was to figure out how common planets like Earth are in the habitable zones of sun-like stars. Think of it as looking for cozy neighborhoods in space where life as we know it could potentially exist. The telescope was equipped with a photometer, a super sensitive instrument that could detect even the slightest changes in a star's brightness. And wow, did it find a lot. I think the, the planets around Alpha Centauri, Proxima Centauri, which are the closest stars, it seems like there are planets around those now. And I think that, that was interesting because we could conceive of going there. Kepler confirmed over 2,600 exoplanets, which is a huge chunk of the total number we know about today. The variety is astonishing too, from massive gas giants, way bigger than Jupiter, to little rocky ones that could fit in your pocket if they weren't so far away and, you know, made of molten lava or something. One of its headline discoveries was Kepler 22b, the first confirmed exoplanet found in the habitable zone of a star much like our sun. But it wasn't all smooth sailing. Differentiating the dimming caused by a planet from the natural variability in a star's brightness was quite the puzzle. Imagine trying to spot a firefly in front of a spotlight. It's that kind of challenge. Plus, the sheer amount of data Kepler sent back was overwhelming. It's like trying to sift through every grain of sand on a beach looking for treasure. They even got the public involved through projects like Planet Hunters, where regular folks could help sort through the data. 
Kepler was supposed to be a 3.5-year operation, but it was so good at its job that they kept extending the mission. Even when it ran into technical issues, losing two of its four reaction wheels, the team didn't give up. They got creative and started the K2 mission, using the sun and the remaining wheels to stabilize the telescope. Kepler kept on trucking, finding more exoplanets and looking into other cosmic phenomena until 2018. The legacy of Kepler is just mind-blowing. It's like it rewrote the astronomy textbooks. We now have a much better idea of how many planets there might be out there and what they're like. It's also shown us that habitable planets might not be as rare as we once thought. Even now, long after Kepler's mission has ended, scientists are still combing through its data, uncovering new findings. It laid the groundwork for future missions like the Transiting Exoplanet Survey Satellite and the James Webb Space Telescope. In a way, Kepler changed how we see ourselves in the universe. It's shown us that planets are a common feature around stars, making our galaxy look like a busy city full of different neighborhoods, each with its own character. And what we find is that we, there's precisely the right amount of stuff in the universe to have a completely flat universe. And the, the, the explanation, the most favoured explanation for that, is the universe is way bigger than the piece we can see. The array of exoplanets discovered in the cosmos is truly mind-boggling, and it's a topic that Brian Cox has a fantastic way of bringing to life. Imagine a universe where planets come in all shapes and sizes, far beyond our earlier expectations. We've got gas giants, massive planets like Jupiter and Saturn, composed mainly of hydrogen and helium. They don't really have a solid surface, and their thick atmospheres add to their mystery. Interestingly, some of these gas giants are found orbiting super close to their stars, much closer than we ever thought possible, challenging our theories of how planets form. Then there are the ice giants, kind of like our own Uranus and Neptune. These are packed with heavier substances like water, ammonia and methane. They're a bit smaller than their gas giant cousins, but still larger than the rocky planets we're more familiar with. Speaking of rocky planets, these are the Earth-like ones, made mostly of rock and metal. They're the kind of planets where you'd expect to find solid ground under your feet. Their sizes and compositions can vary wildly, making each discovery unique. One of the more intriguing types is the hot Jupiters. Picture a gas giant, but instead of being far from their star, like Jupiter, they're incredibly close, even closer than Mercury is to our Sun. Their years can be just a few Earth days long, these planets are scorching hot and their atmospheres might be nothing like we've ever seen, thanks to the intense radiation they receive from their stars. So it's a natural part of the evolution of the universe that you get a period in time when there's complexity in the universe. So stars and planets and galaxies and life and civilizations. But they, are, they exist because the universe is decaying, not in spite of the fact the universe is decaying. And we can't forget about the super-Earths, these are planets larger than Earth, but not quite as big as the smaller gas giants. Some might be rocky, and could even be in the habitable zone of their stars, making them potential candidates for hosting life. For many of these exoplanets, especially those that pass in front of their stars, astronomers have been able to peek into their atmospheres. They're looking for biomarkers, things like oxygen, ozone, methane and water vapor, which could hint at the possibility of life. Brian Cox has been instrumental in unravelling these complex ideas and making them accessible and exciting. His way of explaining things, whether on TV, in lectures or in his writings, really sparks a sense of wonder. He links the study of exoplanets directly to the search for life, discussing the potential conditions on these distant worlds and what they could mean for life as we know it. But it's not just about the science. Cox also gets into the philosophical and existential side of things, pondering what these discoveries mean for our understanding of life in the universe and our place within it.